Hey everyone. Hello, hello, hello. How are you? Welcome to our five day pronunciation training. I'm going live on all channels. So we are here on Instagram. We are here on YouTube and on Facebook. The power of technology. So I just want to say hi, hello, how are you? Let me know that you can hear me and see me. And I'm going to also hold on, add moderator, just give me a sec and we're going to get started. In the meantime, let me know um, what's going on, where you're from and all of that good stuff. Okay. Amar, I can't add you for some reason. So Christina, I'm going to add you. Okay. Good. Okay. I think I can add you here. All right, my friends, we are starting a five day pronunciation training every day at this time, I'm going to go live and every day I'm going to teach you a different aspect of pronunciation. Today is going to be like an intro session and I'm going to talk about the benefits of pronunciation training and pronunciation work that goes beyond the sounds that you learn and why it's important and how you also can improve your grammar and comprehension and vocabulary when you do this type of pronunciation work. Okay. So let me know. Yes, I can see you. Hello. We have people from the U S from Ukraine. Hello. Let me know where you're from. Chile, Chile, Nigeria. Hello. Okay. Singapore. So you're going to see me looking at different places throughout the live. Bear with me. I'm doing this like across all platforms for the first time. Okay, so who here has a little bit of experience with pronunciation work or a lot of experience? So let's do it on a scale of one to 10. If you have never done any type of pronunciation work or you've never studied pronunciation, maybe just watched a few videos on YouTube, then go to go around the lower numbers. So we're going to rate it on a scale of one to 10. So one is barely any pronunciation training and work. 10 is that you are a pronunciation master. You've done a lot of work. You have taken courses. You've been practicing your pronunciation and you know all the sounds, you know, IPA. So that would be a 10. One is no pronunciation work whatsoever. 10 is you're an expert. Okay, so Felipe is a seven. Let me know. There is a two here, three, okay, four, three. Okay, not a lot of experience yet. So let me know. I know that there is a slight minus 10. Okay, I get the point. I get what you're saying here. Six and a half. I love how specific you are. 12. Cool. That means that you've been, okay, Rocio is a 10. Rocio is a student of mine. She's been in all of my programs, I think. Definitely a 10. I would give you a 12 even. Okay, good. All right. So today I want to talk about why pronunciation work is so incredibly important. Now, I don't want to start with the obvious. The obvi obvious would be, yes, we want to learn pronunciation to improve our ability to be understood, which is kind of like the common ground. This is why people say that they want to learn pronunciation, right? But the truth is that pronunciation is the production of the language. And when you focus on the production of the language, you understand that it goes way beyond how you sound or what accent you have. Now, I have trained as an actress and I've acquired the American accent. I'm a non-native speaker of English, as most of you already know. And for me, working on my pronunciation was very important for my career because I wanted to act in the U.S. and I didn't want to always get cast as the foreigner. And this is why I had to acquire an American accent. But when I acquired an, when I worked towards acquiring an American accent, I realized the impact this type of work. And that was like 20 years ago or yeah, it was like all, a, a, a little over 20 years ago. And that was when I realized, no, it's not over, a little under 20 years ago. And that was when I realized that this type of work is super important, not just for how we sound. Now, again, like when you look at 
videos and courses that teach you pronunciation, it's really all about how people perceive you, right? How people understand you, which is also important, but that's not why I'm so passionate about this work. Because my mission is to really help people speak with confidence and with clarity and to own their voice and not avoid English at all. And when you're not comfortable with how you sound and you're not comfortable with expressing yourself in English for whatever reason, then you are less likely to speak. You're less likely to uh, take say yes to opportunities. You are more likely to avoid. And that's what we don't want. So this is why I believe pronunciation work and doing it in a very methodical way is going to help you not just with how you sound, okay? So now let's start with how pronunciation can help you with building your vocabulary. So generally speaking, when you think about improving your vocabulary, you are probably thinking about using different apps or memorizing words or practicing, you know, with, 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 spreadsheets or handouts where you fill in the right word. Um, and there are a lot of really great apps. Like right now I'm learning Spanish and I can tell you that there are a lot of really great resources that help me understand, learn new words. But the problem is that those words that I learn are words that are, that go into my passive vocabulary. What does that mean? I'm likely to understand the word when I hear it, but I'm less likely to actually use it when I need it. And this is where pronunciation work comes in. And I'll tell you how to do it because pronunciation is all about production and it's all about repetition. This is how you change sound. This is how you drill a new habit. Now, speaking a language is all about building habits. It's all about speaking habits. Vocabulary, vocabulary is a speaking habit. Your grammar is a speaking habit. Your pronunciation is a speaking habit. You don't think about it when you use it in your first language, right? Like it's not something that you think about. It's something that you use automatically without thinking about, which is why it's a habit. And to build a habit and think about how you build other habits in your life, what you really need is repetition. And repetition is something that generally exists in pronunciation work and not so much in vocabulary work, right? Like we do include repetition when we introduce or being introduced to new words, but it's not enough. And this is why you understand a lot of words, but they're not available. You can't use them. You can't retrieve them. You get stuck looking for the words and we want to make them more available. And this is why repetition is really important. So let's, for example, take the word tackle. Okay, so to tackle is to deal with a problem or a difficult task. Okay, so you want to you want to start using the word tackle. Let's all say it together. Tackle. Now, let's say you come across this word in a text and you don't know how to pronounce it. How likely are you to actually use it even if you understand the meaning? Let's say you see it in a book, you Google it, you see the definition in your first language or also in English, and you're like, okay, great, I know how to, I know what this word means. If you don't know how to say it, if you don't feel it in your mouth, you're less likely to actually use it, right? You, you're going to avoid using it when the time comes. So this is why when I talk about learning pronunciation and also um, improving your vocabulary, I say that these two things have to be connected together. So you're trying to learn the word tackle and in order for you to kind of like ingrain it into your brain and into your mouth, you've got to say it many, many, many times. So now we're going to do it together. First of all, we need to be clear about the pronunciation. The word tackle starts with a T sound. It's an aspirated T, by the way. So you'll hear a little puff at the beginning. Then we have the A ah, as in cat. So notice how I open my mouth. It's not tackle, right? Like there is no, the A is not pronounced as an A. It's not tackle. It's A. Ah. Ta, ta, okay? The second part is a k sound, a schwa, which is a reduced vowel, and an L. Tackle, tackle. Notice that the L in English, when it's at the end, is a dark L. So it's not tackle, but tackle. It's like a combination of an L and a W. I will talk more about it 
I think on day three, I'm going to share with you the list of the topics. But on day three, we're going to talk about consonants. Let me just double check. No, day two is about consonants and vowels. So day two is all about pronunciation. I'm going to, yes, I'm going to teach you about the dark L tomorrow. I'm on top of the schedule, as you can see. All right. So when we recognize how we need to say it, and you can just go to Google, like, you know, just write how to pronounce on Google or go watch a video to understand how to say it, go to the dictionary, and then you want to say it out loud many times, 20 times, 30 times. Why? Because the act of repetition, which is what we do when we practice pronunciation, the act of repetition, knowing the sounds, is what's going to make this word more available. You're going to feel comfortable because you're not using it regularly. It's like a an artificial way to use this word over and over and over again, which is what you need to make it active, to put it in your active vocabulary. So tackle, 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 tackle tackle. Then you want to put it in context. He was able to tackle the problem, to tackle the problem. You want to put it in a phrase and say it again and again and again. He wanted to tackle the problem, right? So you can see that we use the elements of pronunciation work when we practice vocabulary. At least this is how I teach my students. And I know for a fact that this method works. And I'm also using it when learning Spanish myself right now. And I tried to do many different things because I thought, okay, maybe because I'm brand new to this language, maybe I need to do other things. No, the repetition is what helps me understand and remember a word and the context. Now, let me tell you this. Also, when you learn pronunciation, let's say you learn a certain sound, like the R sound. And then when you practice the R sound, you actually drill a lot of words with R. That's part of the work. You want to practice words with the sound that you're practicing at the beginning, the middle, and end to make it a habit, um, to, to make using the sound a habit, right? And the fact that you are repeating words out loud for the sake of learning a certain sound is what actually also helps you use those words more consistently, right? Because you're repeating words that you don't usually repeat. You're saying them out loud, making these words more available. And this is also why I love uh, to see how pronunciation practice helps increase vocabulary or enhance your active vocabulary. One more thing about that is when I teach my students a new sound, not only that I help them drill it or I provide them with lists of, um, of words with that specific sound, but also with very common phrases. So again, you're repeating phrases that you wouldn't normally use yourself, but phrases that are very common. And when you're repeating those phrases, you're more likely to remember them. Now, I can tell you this, and this is where I want to tell you about my personal story. When I was an actress or learning, learning in an acting school, working towards becoming an actress, um, there was something really interesting about the work that I did there and how that helped me improve not just my vocabulary, but also my grammar. And this is where I'm going to lean into or move into how pronunciation work can help you improve your grammar. Because I never learned grammar in the traditional way. Well, I have recently, I mean, when I, when I became a teacher, but not when I was in my 20s, when I first moved to the, to the U.S., right? So really what I did was just like I immersed in English. I started working there. I had a lot of friends. I used English. And then I, um, I got accepted to this acting school. And this is where I learned pronunciation. And as part of my studies, I had to memorize a lot of texts, a lot of texts. Like every day I would have a new text to memorize. And the way I memorized text was through repetition. I would take a line, right, and just repeat it again and again and again and again until I would remember it. The act of repetition and the act of practicing, you know, like saying it out loud, thinking about the sounds, thinking about the, the melody, um, was the focus, but the byproduct of this work was that I kind of like implemented in my brain 
new grammatical structures or new words, words that I wouldn't normally use, but because I memorized the texts, I would start using those words more frequently because it was kind of like already in my brain. Same thing with grammatical structures, because you memorize a whole chunk of a sentence. And you, when you repeat it again and again, your brain kind of understands this new grammatical structure without learning the rules so much because you hear it, you use it in context. So the repetition of texts when I was learning to become an actress um, was significant in my understanding and my ability to understand grammar on a subconscious level. Because again, here's the problem. I'm sure that most of you or a lot of you, you know a lot of rules a lot of grammatical rules. You know the past simple, and you've learned about the present perfect, and you know technically when you're supposed to use it, right? But let me know in the comments if that resonates with you, if you know the rules, but it's really hard for you to use it when you're speaking. You kind of like go into your default mode, you go to the basic tenses that you've learned, you know, at the beginning of your English uh, studies, and that's it, right? And and all those things that you know, the phrasal verbs and the the uh, the different, the more complicated tenses, it's just not there when you're using. And why is that? Because it's not a habit just yet. Your mouth doesn't feel comfortable using it. So that's the first thing. And the second thing is that you understand it theoretically, but you haven't internalized it, right? You haven't realized it on a subconscious level. And the repetitions that we use in our pronunciation practice, or when you memorize texts, is what provides you. Because remember, pronunciation is all about repetition. <coughs> so you repeat words, phrases, sentences when you implement a new sound. And as a result, you also start understanding the, the grammar and the vocabulary on a subconscious level. And you're more likely to start using it. And I can tell you that this is what happened for me. And this is how I'm learning Spanish now. So think about it. Learning pronunciation can help you or using the pronunciation training or the pronunciation work to also improve your vocabulary. It, help, it happens subconsciously but also you can do it in a more intentional way, the way I explained it earlier today. If you joined recently, then you can go back to the recording. Yes, this live is going to be uh, saved on my account, so don't worry. Um, so improving your vocabulary can happen either intentionally with intentional pronunciation practice or unintentionally by just practicing pronunciation. And as a result, you also increase your active vocabulary. And it can also improve your grammar because you always use, when you practice pronunciation, you use structures, you uh, do a lot of shadowing exercises, you repeat sentences, and you also learn the grammar subconsciously. And again, it's not enough to read or to listen to these structures. This is the gap between all of you who are really exposed to English, and yet you still have a hard time using it. You've got to use it out loud. This is how you build the habit, whether it's the grammar or vocabulary or pronunciation, okay? Another reason why pronunciation work is so incredibly important and helps with your overall fluency and confidence is comprehension. I once posted a question on in my uh, private community and I asked, what is your biggest fear when it comes to speaking in English? And most of the people said not understanding the other person. So if this is something that you are afraid of as well, let me know in the chat. I can tell you again, learning Spanish, living in uh, Barcelona right now, living in Spain, I often feel like, you know, every time I'm answering the phone or every time I need to ask for something and I know how to ask for it, I'm really afraid that they're going to respond to me and I wouldn't be able to understand it. And I want to pull it off. Like, I want to be able to show them, hey, I know how to ask for what I want. But then I just want it to be like, oh, okay, no problem. And that's it. But 
as you know, life is more complicated than that. And there is a lot of back and forth. And sometimes you do want to have a back and forth with another person, especially when you might want to make connections. And the fear of not understanding other people is real, right? Yes, a lot of you say here, yes, 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 I am. Yes, I am. Okay, right. So how can pronunciation work help you with comprehension? I think this is, apart from pronunciation, the production of sounds, pronunciation work is significant, is instrumental when it comes to listening comprehension. Why is that? Because what you hear is not what goes into your ear. I'm going to say it again. Whatever goes into your ear is not exactly what you hear or you perceive because your brain filters out a lot of information, especially if it's information or sounds that don't exist in your first language. Your brain is trained to eliminate things that are not necessary. And to your brain, what is necessary is the sounds, the intonation patterns, the structures, that phonological structures that exist in your first language. So when you speak another language or listen to another language, what happens is that your brain might filter out information. And this is why we're doing this five-day training because I want to teach you a lot of things or I want to teach you how to listen to things because if you can't hear it, you can't say it. And if you can't say something, you might be misunderstood. You might feel like you can't express yourself, okay? So this is why we, what we want to solve. So working on your pronunciation is, a, is really a way to tell your brain what to focus on. It's a way to teach your brain what's important and what's less important. It's a way to put the spotlight on certain things. For example, if you practice, and this is something we're going to do tomorrow, if you practice the sheep ship vowel pair, sheep ship, reach rich, and let's say you don't have that in your first language, and whenever you hear this pair, you hear sheep sheep, reach reach, and this is how you also say it, right? So when you just when someone just tells you, oh, there are two different sounds, the tense E and the lax E, you might say, oh, okay, it's good to know. But your brain is still going to filter it out. The way to teach your brain how to start hearing the difference is by taking it through saying it. Okay. You got to say it. You got to pronounce it. The repetition. And when you pronounce certain things is really a way to teach your brain the difference between different sounds or something that happens in the language. I'm going to be even more specific. You know, in American English, there are a lot of reductions where a bunch of words are reduced to one word. Instead of, what do you? You're not going to hear that. And you, like a lot of times when we're learning a language, then we just learn how to read it first. So we see, what do you want, right? Four words. You're expecting to hear four words. You're expecting to hear what do you want. But in actuality, what happens is that you hear, what do you want? What do you, what do you, what do you, what do you? All of a sudden you have, you have that uh, sound and you have such a short phrase that you can't tell that it's actually four different words because you perceive them or you imagine it to sound differently. What do you? And all of a sudden it's like, what do you, what do you, right? So when you practice those reductions, what happens is that your brain starts noticing it. It starts understanding that words are not separate, that we speak and like we think and speak in units and in groups. And really the best way to do it is of course through listening exercises, but it's not enough. It's through the repetitions and the pronunciation exercises that allow like all of those allow you to actually hear it better. So it really helps with comprehension. Also in my programs, we do a lot of listening exercises. And when we practice a new, uh, listening to a new dialect or a new accent or reductions, for example, we really ask our students to repeat it out loud. So they say it not because we want them to acquire the Scottish accent, but because when you say it in the way that you hear it, you're more likely to recognize it.
Okay. So comprehension is another reason why pronunciation work is super, super important. If you want to speak English with clarity, confidence, and freedom and reach limitless fluency, which is why we're here. Okay. Um, another reason is ease and effortlessness and feeling like yourself. Okay. Because, and, and, and by the way, I totally forgot to tell you that next week on Tuesday, I'm going to host a masterclass where I'm going to dive deeper into this type of work. And it's three steps to us uh, to make your pronunciation clear and simple in English. So if you like this topic and you would like to explore it a bit more, then just so you know, this masterclass is absolutely free. And if you're on YouTube and Facebook, then just click the link below the video. And if you're on Instagram, then you can just comment the word class. Okay and you will get a link to sign up. It's absolutely free. And I'm going to go deeper, especially deeper uh, and give you more specific strategies to what I'm about to share. And I think you are going to be super interested. So just write the word class and sign up to the masterclass. You can do it through DMs. If you're on YouTube and Facebook, just click the link uh, in the description. Okay. The reason why pronunciation work is important is because it allows you to speak with ease. If you tend to feel tired after speaking, even for 10 minutes, and I see that a lot with my students where you're, you know, you are um, speaking for a little bit and then you feel exhausted. You're like, I can't speak anymore. You know, you speak for one hour and you feel like you've been speaking all day. If that is the case, it's very likely that it's because how because of how you use your articulation organs. Your pronunciation is not optimal. We don't learn pronunciation in school. We don't learn where to place our tongue. So we try to imitate what we hear. And in many cases, without guidance, what we do is that we don't place the tongue in the right place or we add a lot of tension to it. Now, again, I'm going to go deeper and give you strategies on how to overcome this in the masterclass. So save your seat. And we have two sessions on Tuesday, next Tuesday. So write the word class. And also, and I think on Facebook, you can also write class and then get a link to sign up. But if not, just click the, uh, the link in the description. Um, so when you add a lot of a lot of um, tension or when you use the wrong muscles, which is something that we do and we try to compensate when we don't really know how to do something, what happens, imagine like you are jogging or running with weights on, right? Of course, your performance is going to be compromised. Of course, you're not going to have the same results. Of course, you're not going to be as fast, as light. You're not going to feel great running because you feel like something is pulling you back, right? You're going to feel like there is a burden there. And that's really what happens when your pronunciation is not optimal because we tend to add a lot of tension in unnecessary places. So we need to learn how to let go of that tension. That could happen, one, with awareness, and I'm going to teach you that in the master class. That is absolutely free. And also with effective pronunciation practice because you actually learn how to pronounce certain sounds in an, an optimal way right? And then the repetition will create a new habit rather than the old habit. For example, you know, I see a lot of people being aware that the TH requires you to stick the tongue out, think in theory, but because they're so aware, what happens is that they start tensing up everything, think, and there's a lot of tension here. So again, imagine what it's like for the body when you add that extra tension where you don't need it. And usually tension brings tension, right? So when you add tension in one place, it starts adding tension in another place, like your voice or other sounds or your vowels. And then you might feel like everything is forced. So it's going to change your voice or it might change your voice. And you just might feel exhausted after. And we don't want that right? We don't want that. We want you to be able to speak all day without feeling tension, without feeling stressed, because when you're effortless, you're more likely to speak. And when you're more likely to speak, you're more likely to 
make connections and say yes to opportunities and express yourself fully and improve because the more you speak, the more you improve, the more comfortable you speak, the more likely you are to try new words or try new grammatical structures, things that you avoid doing when you don't feel com confident, when you feel tired, when you try to maintain your energy, right? So it's kind of like, you know, people tend to blame themselves for not being where they want to be. They tend to blame themselves for not sounding a certain way. And they're like, oh, I hate my voice. Maybe it's not your voice. Maybe you're just manipulating it when you're using, when you're speaking English, because someone once told you that English has a lower pitch or someone once told you that you sound too nasal and you need to change it. Right. And then, and, or maybe you came up with the idea that you need to change your voice Maybe you're just stressed and it's affecting your voice. And then you're like, oh, I don't like my voice. Maybe it's not the voice that it's the problem. It's the fact that you are not, you don't understand how to use your voice or use your pronunciation in the optimal way, in the most optimal way, simply because you haven't learned it. And no one teaches that usually when you learn, you know, when you go to school. Okay, and this is where I come in because I really want to give you the tools to learn and understand pronunciation better and understand why it's so important for your overall fluency and confidence. The last thing why pronunciation work is important is, of course, sounds and intonation and rhythm and stress and saying what you want to say and getting what you want. It's really, it's not about sounding like a native. It's not about making sure that people understand you, even though of course it's important, right? But it's not the most important thing. The most important thing is that you have the confidence to use all the words. I told you, you tend to avoid, you probably tend to avoid words that you don't know how to pronounce. And also to express yourself in a way that is clear without feeling like, there is confusion when, you know, like you see that confused look. And I've, I've experienced that recently when I try to say something and someone was like, what are you saying really in Spanish? Um, but it was probably because I used the wrong verb, but it wasn't about pronunciation. The thing is that for me in Spanish, my pronunciation is good, right? So it's a little deceiving because people hear the pronunciation and it sounds, it's clear unless I'm totally mispronouncing a word, but then I just don't know the words. Uh, <laughs> it's like a, it's a, it's a, it's a different problem. Um, so anyway, like being able to say what you want, to be clear, to know how to deliver a clear message, which is really about where you put the stress and what word you choose to stress, what words you tend to not stress, right? So all of that is really, really important. And again, the class, the live class that I'm going to be teaching on Tuesday, if you just joined us, then uh, if you're on Instagram and Facebook, you can just write the word class in the comments and you're going to get a link to sign up. If you're on YouTube, just click the link. It's absolutely free. And it, I'm going to give you the three steps to make your pronunciation in English simple and clear. So it's really about how to learn pronunciation in a simple way and how to be clear. So I'm going to tackle three important things that you need for that. Now that maybe you understand why pronunciation is so important. Um, so yeah, delivering a clear message. Let's say you're a Japanese speaker and you tend to confuse R's and L's, okay? Because both of them in Japanese, they sound the same. Sometimes they're, they're alternated. And first, it's hard to understand English words with L and R. So this is why it helps with comprehension. But also when you say right instead of light, people will think you're saying right. Okay. So people might perceive a different word, which will affect your ability to communicate. So understanding what people expect are expecting to hear and knowing how to say those sounds will help you communicate with ease. It's not about eliminating your accent. We have full respect for people's origins and backgrounds and sounds and their native language. We don't want you to lose it. Okay. I've trained as an actress. And for me, it was critical because that meant really like 
getting certain roles or not. So for me, that was for a very, very, very specific reason. But for most people, having an accent is not bad. But being clear, delivering your message clearly and fluently and confidently will save you a lot of time and stress and effort and will help you create better connections and will eliminate obstacles and friction and create more rapport. And this is why understanding the sounds of the language that you speak in is important. And it's not the same as losing your accent completely. That's not the purpose of this work. It's possible if you're an actor and, and you want to acquire an American accent or a British accent, that's absolutely possible. So you do the work that I teach and you go a little deeper or you practice more diligently, right? It's possible. But for most people, that's not the aim. But understanding how to use the right sounds, choosing the right sounds, understanding why you're not clear if people don't understand you is really taking back the power, taking back the power when communicating in a second language. And that's why we're here. That's what it's all about, right? Gaining back the power, feeling like English is second nature to you. Like you are as expressive in your first language, maybe more limited, maybe you have less words, maybe you wouldn't use all the fancy <laughs> grammatical structures, but still you are going to feel at home when you speak in English. And I believe from my experience and from helping thousands and thousands and thousands of students around the world, I know this works. I know this helps people gain the freedom and the self-expression and improve fluency and help them get stuck a lot less and understand people better through this methodical work. Tomorrow, I'm going to take some uh, questions in a little bit, but I want to tell you that tomorrow we're going to start uh, talking about sounds. So I'll teach you about similar vowel pairs like the sheep ship, pool pull, the R, the L, I'm going to give you tips on how to pronounce these sounds and how to practice them effectively. So make sure you join me tomorrow for tomorrow's live session. On day three, we are going, I'm going to look at my notes because I feel like, un hold on, video is paused. Okay, let me know that you're still here. Hello, everyone. Okay, uh, so day two is all about pronunciation. Day three is all about intonation, rhythm, and stress. So we're going to talk about how to deliver a clear message, which is super cool. What time? Same time. Now it's um, 4.40 for me. I started at 4 p.m. I believe it's 10 a.m. New York time. Um, so I'm going to start at the same time. But go, go to my stories if you're on Instagram. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can see it already scheduled. So you'll know the time. If not, go to my stories and just uh, get a reminder or you can schedule a reminder through Instagram to be notified when I go live. Day four is all about pronunciation hacks. I'm going to share with you tips that people usually don't talk about. And when I teach that to my students, they love it. They're like, oh, I wish I, I've known that um, uh, before because it really makes life a lot easier when you know those things. And day five is... All, only going to be on Instagram because I'm going to do live coaching. I'm going to invite you guys to go live with me and practice with me the stuff that we talked about, and I'm going to give you pronunciation feedback. So day five is only on Instagram. The first four days are going to be on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. All right. Now, again, a reminder to sign up. Oops. Did I just? I don't know what I just did. <sighs> But I think I'm like black and white. I just I just added a filter. <laughs> I don't know how I did it, but I don't want to mess it up. Um, <laughs> if someone. <laughs> OK, if you're watching this on Instagram, I'm like in this black and white filter. Um, it looks pretty. So anyway, and on YouTube, it's normal. <laughs> OK, the thing is that I'm really afraid of changing it because it might flip the camera and you'll see all the messy lighting and camera right behind me. <laughs> okay, wait, or I'll like, I have another funny story about filters. My daughters were playing with my 
uh, Zoom account and they added a lot of filters. And then I had a coaching session, a life coaching session with students and I was preparing for it. And um, like two minutes before I had to get started, I log in on Zoom and then I see that I have like a mustache and a hat and I don't know how to remove it. And I'm like, I, I, I forgot, like I tried to, cause I, I forgot how to do it. And I was like looking through zoom and I was like all the settings. I was like, what am I going to do now? If people join and see my mustache, it's going to be really funny. Anyway, this is why I don't, I don't do filters. Um, <laughs> anyway, let's take some questions. And also sign up for the live masterclass, the live class that is happening next Tuesday. It's going gonna be in full color, not black and white, I promise. Uh, so <laughs> join me. Okay, Benny signed up, good, I'm glad. Okay. Um, do you go live on TikTok? No, that was a little too much for me to go live on TikTok. Um, questions. How is living in Spain? <laughs> Very appropriate for pronunciation. Uh, it's great. It's really, really pushing me to do things like going live in my house. I used to have a studio where everything was set up and today we had to create all the setup in my apartment, which is great because my daughters are off today and they helped me set up and they got so excited seeing that. And I think they're watching me right now and they're going to make fun of <laughs> my filter. Okay, let's see if I can change it. Okay, never mind. Um, questions about pronunciation or about the live? Let me know. Okay. Um, my problem is when you tell me I don't understand. Rosa, can you be more specific? Mm -mm -mm. Okay. Oh, I have like a questions tab. How to join any class? Just write the word class in the comments if you're watching this on Instagram and you'll get a link to, you can sign up through your DM. Um, how do you speak, in, how can I speak English with confidence? This is a really good question. I am promoting the class, but also... One of the steps in the live class is to work on your mindset. So I'm going to go deeper and talk about mindset and how to build confidence actively, intentionally, intentionally build confidence, not expecting confidence to be the outcome of your improvement in English, because this is what usually people do. They wait until they're more fluent to feel confident. And then confidence never comes because you have to be intentional about becoming confident. Okay. So it's a lot of mindset work and understanding the limiting beliefs that you might have, but also it's a lot about putting yourself out there and practicing and speaking and not letting limiting beliefs get in your way. Okay. Okay. How much does it cost? It doesn't cost anything. So the, the class is absolutely free. The class is free. It's one hour, then I'm gonna stay for questions. So if you have questions about that, class is absolutely free. How long does it take to have a better English pronunciation learning all the sounds? <laughs> My daughter just messaged me here. Mom, should I help you? <laughs> I don't think she knows how to change the filters. Amalia, it's okay. I can I can manage the black and white. Um, how long does it take? So usually inside my signature program, it's called New Sound. It's three months and it's 14 weeks of intensive practice. And um, sorry, I'm just laughing at the fact that I'm never mind. So three months of intensive practice. And usually this is where you get a lot of the significant work in. And you may not be able to use it consistently, but um, 
but you understand a lot better. You understand how to use the sounds. You understand your struggles and you start improving significantly on the key sounds that you need to improve. So usually within three months, you're going to see significant results to use it consistently. It's about six months. It's not like a it's not a magic solution, right? It's not like, oh, I learn a sound and that's it. And usually people expect that. Usually people expect to practice a sound. Oh, now I understand how to make the R. How come I can't use it consistently? That's the idea of repetition. That's the idea of making it a habit. And sometimes it takes three weeks if it's an easy shift. And sometimes it can take six months. And it's, it also really depends on the work that you do. Um, right. It's also very different. Like it depends on how much you practice and how you practice. If you practice consistently between 15 to 20 to 30 minutes a day, sometimes it's just like repetitions or, uh, shadowing that is enough to make a significant difference within three months. Okay. Three to six months. Okay. Um, All right. So Nina is asking about new sound. Is it uh, for groups or is it like beyond? No, it's a lot more structured than beyond. There is like a beginning, middle and end. It's a 14 week program with uh, videos that you watch day by day. Really, it's more chronological. Does IPA help in pronunciation process? Thank you. OK, so the IPA is the International Phonetic Alphabet. Um, let me try and see. Oh, that was easy. Just clicked on the icon on the right. Uh, see, don't be afraid to dare and to try and do things live. Um, so where was I? Um, what was the question? I got distracted by myself. Um, IPA. Okay. I love using IPA, right? I think in IPA. When I think about the pronunciation of word of a word, I think in symbols. If you have learned IPA, International Phonetic Alphabet, you know that those symbols represent specific sounds. English is not a phonetic language. The spelling it does not correspond with the pronunciation. So if you see the letter O, it could be, in Spanish, it's O, right? In English, it could be A, as in coffee, could be A, as in Sun, S O N, could be U as in do, it could be U uh, as in computer, right? It could be O as in go. So I just gave you five different sounds for the same letter. How would you know, right? If you are just looking at the word for the first time, that this O. Now there are patterns, but they're so inconsistent and hard to learn that a lot of times when people teach pronunciation that they teach you to use the IPA. So for the five different sounds that I used as an example, you'll have different symbols. Ah, as in father, a uh, as in cup, a schwa, uh, which is like an unstressed cup sound and O, oh, right? So these are different symbols. And when you see it, it's always the same sound. There is no confusion. So it's a way to map out the sounds of English. But it's good for people who are very analytical, who like to have it organized in their brain. And they're not, you know, a lot of times there are people who are intuitive and they just need to hear it and say it or to see it written in a loose transcription to understand how to say it. And the IPA just feels limiting or stressful and creates stress. So it really depends on how you like to work. I like to map it out in my brain. And I think it's really helpful to use it when teaching. But when I teach my students, I use IPA, but I also use loose transcription, right? I just write the letter EE -E for a high E or the letter I. So I use for a tense E. Um, so I use the alphabet that people already know and change it a little bit so that it's more intuitive to read. So the so I, I use both. So I show IPA and also loose transcription because I believe that different people understand it differently and, and you know, whatever works for you. Uh, but in general, if you do go deeper into pronunciation work, then I recommend learning IPA because it it's very straightforward. If this is the symbol, that's the sound. Okay. Now, if you go deeper into dialect work, 
So for a specific symbol, you might have what's called diacritics, like small symbols on top of the IPA. And then it's like how you change the pronunciation a little bit of that specific sound. But that's a bit more advanced. So if you go deeper into pronunciation work, phonology work, accent work, then IPA is really important. Okay. All right. And yes, like, let us know in the comments if you are an IPA fan or you are like, I don't, I, it just confuses me more. So let us know in the chat. Okay, guys. So I'm going to wrap up. I'm going to see you tomorrow at the same time, at the same time that this started 50 minutes ago. Um, so mark it in your calendar and also sign up for the live class. Okay. That's next Tuesday. Just write class in the comments if you haven't signed up yet or click the link if you're watching this on YouTube. And um, it's where I'm going to share with you the three steps to make your English pronunciation simple, which is really important because people tend to complicate things and we don't want to complicate. We want to focus on the 20% simple and clear. I'm going to talk about what to do when you tend to get tired after speaking and how to not get exhausted and simplify your pronunciation so there is more effortlessness and ease. I'm also going to talk about how to use what you learn more consistently. So it's not just the practice, but also in your speaking, which is a problem a lot of people face. And the third thing we're going to talk about is mindset, how to build the confidence to sound like yourself, to own the language, how to not be afraid of changing your pronunciation, because a lot of time you might feel like you are fake or artificial. I just uh, posted a video about it on YouTube today, so go watch it if this is how you feel. Right, so I'm going to talk about that and give you practical tips on how you can improve. Uh, so I hope to see you in the masterclass, and I hope to see you tomorrow in our training session about sounds, pronunciation, and consonants. All right, my friends, thank you so, so much, and have a beautiful, beautiful rest of the day. See you tomorrow.